Hi folks, I hope that you're all well. Welcome back to Kamali's YouTube channel. Today our guest on our Lockdown Diaries feature is uh, John McLaughlin. So we're looking forward to hearing John's uh, responses to the Lockdown Diary questions. So over to you, John. I've probably been working harder than I've ever worked in my entire life during lockdown. Um, I've been working from home as a lecturer with Inverness College just about constantly, all day long, uh, usually all evening long as well, sometimes six, seven days a week. I'm trying to get some time off on a Sunday but it's been absolute manic. Um, it's, it's getting a bit quieter now but for the first few weeks it was just frantic. Um, the reason for that is I've been really busy trying to change everything I do, all the teaching lessons, uh, making them all online. Uh, for any exams or assessments I've got to make multiple versions so that students can't teach, uh, can't cheat I should say. Uh, and marking things takes an awful lot longer because everything's got to be downloaded uh, and then transferred into various other secure locations and that takes an awful lot of time to do. And it's been a lot easier in the past to do that on paper. You just get your red pen out and you tick or, or you cross uh, and, and mark mark the work. And also students themselves have needed a lot more support uh, because it's quite harder to help them uh, with their difficulties when you're not face to face. So I'm getting used to using things like Skype and Webex and all the other stuff that um, that is used for meeting students online. Um, so it's been quite quite good fun sometimes, but as I say, really, really busy and really, really hectic. And some of the some of the lessons I've done have been quite amusing. Um, like for example, uh, one lesson there was two dogs barking at each other. One from a from an owner in Brora, and the other one from Inverness. So I don't know what these dogs thought they were uh, they were barking at, but they were barking at each other over, over, online. It's quite interesting. And I had one student ask me if um, he could be excused from class because he had to intervene in a dispute between his wife and his two-year-old son. So it's had its moments. Um, I've had to learn a lot of new skills and get to grips with technology. And, and this is just so not me. Uh, I'm, I'm a technophobe, really. I really don't like technology. In fact, I've borrowed Claire's phone, my wife's phone, to, to do this uh, as well. Uh, and I don't like having to type a lot. Uh, I've become a typist. I didn't realise that, you know, all those years ago when I left school, I never set out to be a typist, but that's that's what I've become. Because um, all I seem to do is type all the time, very, very slowly. And if I could go back in time and give one piece of career advice to myself at school, uh, it would have been to do secretarial studies, just not geography, just do some typing. Um, I think they're probably in the same column, column choice in fifth year. So I should have I should have chosen typing actually instead of something else. Um, I'm trying not to moan too much at this time. That, that's that's the danger that um, when you're working so hard, you sort of end up moaning about everything. And uh, sometimes I feel like I'm turning into Victor Meldrew. So I've really got I've really got to watch out uh, for that. Um, it hasn't been all bad though. I've been spending a lot more time with two of my members of my family with, with uh, than I normally would. I've been seeing more of Claire, my wife, uh, and I'm always home in time for tea, which has been an issue in the past, uh, and that's been good. Also, Ali, my youngest son, um, has been home, uh, and that's been good fun having him around. Um, even just the, the humour and just um, when he shows me his funny YouTube videos uh, and internet jokes, uh, for example, for example, um, he showed me he showed me one. There's a picture of a guy uh, going for a, a job interview, uh, and he was asked the question, "How are you performing? Uh, how are you? How are you? How are you at performing under pressure?" Um, to which he replies, uh, "Not bad, but I do a much better Bohemian Rhapsody." That's quite funny. And there's another joke where a, there's a man who asks another man his daughter's name. And so he tells him his daughter is called Kath. And the first man then asks, what is Kath short for? Uh, to which the second man replies, well, she's only three years old. Do you get that? 
That's that's why she's short because she's only three years old. Anyway, I, I thought it was quite funny. Um, so during lockdown time for church, I've been enjoying Scott's sermons, uh, and Ali is always um, rallies us to go to his online church service at the Tron uh, on Sundays at eleven a.m. And I've actually quite enjoyed that, um, even though they still they're still doing a full one and a quarter hour service. A hymn prayer sandwich and a full a full length nine point sermon to follow. Uh, with the minister actually preaching from the pulpit um in his in his empty church, apart from the, the sound guy, the, the video guy. Um, but they've been going through Hebrews recently and there are some amazing verses at the end of, of Hebrews. And and I think um, just like Caitlin was saying in her video diary, um during this time I found that there's a, a lot of verses that uh, I've read for years and years that are just come, coming back to me in a new way uh, as I read them uh, again uh, and, and God's just been giving me some, some new insights and new sightings of verses that um, were familiar to me but I've just suddenly suddenly seen them in a, in a new way but I'll, I'll come back to this later when I talk about um, encouragement Um, I will just say one thing about Hebrews. Um, I think I think it's when times are difficult. That's when when God's word really really makes you listen. Um, when when you do, when you are concerned about the future and what's going on, you, you do you do seem to hear and listen more closely to what God's saying through His word. So Hebrews thirteen, uh, just listen to these words. Uh, now may the God of peace who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. So that that was Hebrews 13 verses 20 and 21. Um, I've also enjoyed Saturday night quiz evenings, not with Ken Miley's in case you're wondering, but at the start of lockdown, Claire organised a Zoom get-together uh, with her two other sons, uh, Kyle in Edinburgh uh, and Paul uh, in Switzerland, uh, and their girlfriends. Uh, and that's been good, um, and has meant the whole family uh, meets up at that time, which is something we probably wouldn't have done uh, in normal times. So I've grown to appreciate Zoom, uh, but, but can't seem to get the, the Fat Larry's band tune out of my head every time I, I go on it. So what am I thankful for? What am I thankful for? Lots of things, probably lots of lots and lots of things, but top of the list uh, would be living next to uh, such a lovely place that I can go for a walk. Um, especially during the first few weeks of lockdown when you're only allowed out for a, a short walk per day. Um, this, is, this is my go-to place and so I'm here right now just um, to show you exactly where I've where I gone. I'm at the top of Craig Fadrig. Um, and so Craig Fadrig Wood has been, my, has been my, my, my lovely place to go for a walk. Uh, usually I've been going between 7 and 8 in the morning, um, obviously to, to, to maintain social distancing from other people. And initially though, in lockdown, that was quite a busy time. There was a lot of people out uh, up the woods at that time. Um, but it's kind of died down. There's less people around. I think maybe because you've got more time to, to exercise if you want to. Um, now, when lockdown started, we we're, were at the tail end of winter, as you remember, back in March. And so, um, during that time, since then I've been able to see spring come. Uh, to the woods and uh, see the changes that that's brought on. Uh, uh, seeing the change in views on a daily basis as well, like just now you can see the, the Bewley Firth there. Uh, and Ben Wivis is quite misty in the distance, but some days it's crystal clear. You can see um, beyond Ben Wivis and you can see the snow in the mountains in the distance. Um, so it's, it's an amazing place to live and to just come out and about. Um, the bluebells came and went. There, there was a big carpet of, of bluebells up here uh, in the fort on Craig Fadrick. Um But they've been and gone. Uh, and they, they just, there's just a lovely smell from them. Uh, but in general, there's, there's wildflowers pop, popped up all over the place during this time. So it's really nice to see spring come 
uh, in this area uh, and the gorse turning a brighter and brighter yellow and some gorse and that lovely smell of coconut that you get from gorse this time of year as well uh, I've been seeing the looking at the trees um, changing colour and changing into their into their green going from brown to green uh, and in the forest in the distance from the top of Craig Fadrick also turning from that olive colour into uh, a lovely summer green and it's been really great to see the birds uh, and little tiny birds and bigger birds all frantically trying to find food uh, for their young uh, at this time uh, and there's some lambs in the fields nearby, some highland cows uh, I've seen deer early in the morning and red squirrels um, I've seen a deer that thinks she's a sheep um, just below me there's a, there's, a, there's a few sheep in a field and on a regular basis to see a deer in amongst them um, just uh, mucking in with the with the sheep uh, one more than I saw a, a pair of red squirrels chasing each other up adjacent trees and then leaping across the tops of the trees um, across the path so that, that was amazing all, all that was missing really was a, a David Attenborough commentary uh, on the situation but up here in the fort there's also a lot of history um, quite fascinating to think that 1500 years ago um, King Brood um, may have had his, his fort here, his, his, his centre here uh, ruling over half of the northern half of Scotland uh, and then St Columba who's um, supposed to have come to the door of the fort and made the sign of the cross in order for the doors to be open uh, so that's, that's, that's quite amazing, quite fascinating to be uh, in that situation in this place with so much history um, so this has been, it's been lovely to, to live and to, to come out here uh, just a short walk from, from where I live um, um, but there's also other things I've been thankful for during lockdown and uh, the contact that's been maintained with the church um, through the groups and their organised activities and so on that's been really good and so I just uh, thank Scott and Anne and Elaine and the, and the two Moiras and so on Um, as I've said earlier, I found work challenging, uh, quite difficult, quite demanding, quite um, busy. But I think the biggest thing I find challenging overall is uh, not really knowing what's going to happen in the future. Um, I like to know what's going to happen next. Um, I've always been like that through life and, and Claire's the same. We always like to know what's going to happen. She She's a planner, um, so it, it, it's quite... An anxious um, stage just now, just to know what's not what's going to happen next. Um, mostly, um, mostly from my sons. Really, I'm wondering what's going to be, what the world's going to be like for them. Will they be able to to find a secure job? Um, will they be healthy uh, and so on? Um, will they be okay? I'm not so worried about myself. I'm more concerned about um, their future uh, in this this different world. Um, my oldest son Paul has been unable to find work since January and he's, he's also waiting for an operation on his eye. And Kyle, my other son, is currently working as a doctor on a Covid ward in Edinburgh. Uh, and he was due to be married next weekend, um, but that was obviously cancelled because of lockdown. But he's just heard today that uh, there's a chance that maybe mid-July uh, they might be able to, to get married. So that, that's that's been good news for him and for us all, really. Um, so um, it's going to be a small gathering. Originally, it was going to have quite a lot of people there, maybe maybe a couple of hundred or so. But uh, it's down to you know the minimum five people, whoever it is. So we're, we're trying to figure out who that's going to be uh, to go along. Definitely, he's, definitely his mum anyway. So another another challenge for me, as I said, is has been working and not knowing, um, not being able to stop working and not really knowing when to stop. Um, and there's been a lot of deadlines I've had to meet, so the tendency is just to carry on working into the evening uh, and into the weekend as well. And, and, and that's harder to do if you're working from home. If you, if you go off to a place of work, you can say, well, that's me. I'm off home at a certain time and you can decide not to do any more work anymore for that day. But, but when home is your workplace um, and colleagues and students continue to email you uh, late at night, it's hard to... To shut down, you think, oh, I'll just just a wee bit more, then it'll be easier for the next day. 
I uh, also find it quite challenging to go shopping just now, especially for, uh, you know, for for groceries and so on. And, and I find it hard to keep the two metre distance from people, especially around the cheese section. And it's a bit like an advanced game of non-contact twister sometimes when you've got to negotiate um, or look for an opportunity to get in and um, grab your pound of cheese and get back out again. So... But the big challenge for me has been all the uncertainty, all the all the not knowing what's going to be ha happening next, uh, and so it, that that means that I need to be patient, um, pray a lot, and trust that God has everything in His hands. Uh, and if all this makes me pray more, then that's probably a good thing uh, for for me. Um, I think I would encourage you to, like me, read read your Bible more uh, because um, I think I've had more time to do that when you're not rushing out for work in the morning. Um, you can read a little bit more, you can spend a little more time uh, reading God's Word. Um, so recently in my readings, uh, I've, I've been reading um, verses or, or thoughts for the day around the, around the phrase, treasures in the darkness. I don't know if you've heard that phrase before, treasures in the darkness. It's it's finding special things and, and um, things to cling on to, things to hold on to uh, from God uh, when times are dark. Um, and these are dark times, uh, not knowing what's going to happen next. What will society be like in the future? Are we going to lose a lot at this time or through this time? Are we going to continue to feel isolated? Are we going to see more suffering, more misery and hardship um, in, our, in our own country and right across the world? Or is this a turning point? This is a time when, when we wake up and we, and we see what really matters. Um, a wake up call for everybody really to, to lead people back and to, to think more about God and to, to see the bigger picture behind everything, to see how frail and fragile uh, life is uh, and just see how much we need God and need to depend on him for, for everything really um, and also for salvation. So this God who loves us, to be able to see him more, uh, the one who sent his son uh, to die for us, that we could have real life, uh, eternal life uh, uh, and life in all its fullness for, from now onwards. Maybe, maybe it's a time for for us all to realise that and for people in general in society to, to think about um, the Creator. So the phrase treasures in the darkness uh, is from the, this following passage from Isaiah, uh, which, as I say, is featured in my Bible readings very recently. So Isaiah 45, verses 2 to 7. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. I will give you treasures, the treasures of darkness, riches stored in secret places, so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who summons you by name. For the sake of Jacob, my servant, of Israel, my chosen, I summon you by name and bestow on you a title of honour, though you do not acknowledge me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. I will strengthen you, though you have not acknowledged me, so that from the rising of the sun to the place of its setting, men may know there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and create disaster. I, the Lord, do all these things. So who knows, maybe this is a time when people people realise who the Lord is. So I would encourage you also to find and dig for treasures in the darkness. Are, are there precious, wonderful things that God gives you? Things in nature, things that bring joy, uh, just things that you've noticed. And uh, for me, it's certainly been a, a deeper awareness uh, of God's creation uh, and, and 
spring come into summer up in Craig Fadrig Wood. And it's also these verses that I've become more aware of as I've spent more time and had more time to read the Bible. Like the, the verse in Hebrews that talks about Jesus as the great shepherd. And I've been struck by how many, how many different places we hear that in the Bible. So the Old Testament and the New Testament, the, the Jesus who is our great shepherd. So if, like me, you're feeling a bit sheepish, are you in need of a good, a good shepherd at this time as well? And I heard someone say on the radio recently that if Jesus is the good shepherd, then his sheepdogs are our faith and hope. So uh, <clears throat> another treasure in the darkness for you. Here's, here's a, a verse. Uh, here's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, some verses from that passage. Uh, and this is interesting because it compares our earthly tent with a heavenly building. So we're living in a tent, basically, here just now. But one day we'll live in a heavenly building. Now, I know it's it's nice to go camping, but we'd all prefer to live long term in a building, I'm sure. So Paul says, For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven not built by human hands. Meanwhile we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent we groan and are burdened, because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God who has given us the Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Treasures indeed. Now, um, for my final suggestion, encouragement, I'm going to give you some homework, because that's what teachers do. And I'd like you to, to read Paul's letter to Philemon, tucked away there in before Hebrews. Now, I'd like you to read it because... To be honest, I'd forgotten it was there. And like, like me, um, you might discover it's a treasure. And, and I read it today and, and it really helped me. So, yeah. Read Philemon. For next week. <laughs>